Hello, everyone. This is Faye. And of course, you know, I sell Medicare plans. Um, I am always searching and searching and searching for people outside of our industry who are able to help us with those additives that we need to be successful men and women in this Medicare business. Now, I Sell Medicare Plans is the podcast where everyone comes who's in the Medicare streets who really wants to know what to do and how to do it. So this is where you're going to get the additives also. This Today, my guest is none other, and forgive me if I don't pronounce it correctly, Nama, did I get it close? Yes, yes, you did. Ma. Oh, <laughs> great, great. And she is such a wonderful person who is really, really able to talk to us about body image. So as professionals, it is so critically important that you have the right body image. Now, being in different parts of the country, the weather predicts very, very often what we wear and how you conduct your business if you're in an office setting, a brick and mortar, or if you're actually meeting customers in other places, your dress would be appropriate. But do you really think about, or have you given any thought to the confidence that you can build within yourself with your own body image? So our guest today is going to explain that to us. Tell us what is some examples of like a body image might be that you may not have even associated with the success of your business. Welcome and thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Faye. I really, I'm really excited to be on your platform. I love the work that you do. It's very much needed in our community. And so I'm excited to be able to serve your community and answer and address questions about body image and body confidence. Oh, thank you. So now in, in, in your own words, could you define for us what, what is body image? What does that mean? Good. Well, body image is the perception a person has about their physical appearance. It's the thoughts, it's the emotions that ensue as a result of that perception. Now, most people have either a positive body image or a negative body image. Now, what does a positive body image look like? Positive body image is when you're fully accepting of yourself, your physical appearance um, in, in its entirety. You know, you're confident in the way you look. It, it, you have a good sense of uh, self-esteem. Now, a negative body image is when you're constantly, you know, belittling the way you look. Um, you avoid looking at yourself in the mirror and maybe some social um, activities because of the way you feel about your body. Now, um, ideally, we want to develop a positive body image. And one thing I've discovered is that a lot of us women lack body image, a positive body image. So statistic wise, for instance, I love statistics, um, about nine out of 10 women in America over the age of 18 have expressed a dissatisfaction with their body. Now it could be anything from their hair to their toes. If you have some kind of dissatisfaction and it's holding you back from achieving your your potential, then you do probably have some body image limiting beliefs. Now with our male counterparts, it's not as bad, but it's, it's, it's significant enough. It's about 78% of our men have body image limiting beliefs. For them, it's it, what it looks like is, you know, them not having that macho muscle physique, you know, and wanting to beef up uh, that body to, you know, get the girl's attention and stuff. So. That's what body image is in a nutshell. So how does that affect our our mental health and, and our success? I mean, you've already described it very, very well. 
So the body image, and, and let me just add that I I truly believe what you just said, because I know that if I dress a certain way mm -hmm. and I know that I look a certain way, I feel a certain way. Yes. So Absolutely. when I am able to do that well and look at myself, and I guess you can't really lie to yourself when you look in the mirror <laughs> and say, <laughs> and I look at myself and I say, yes, you look good today. Then mm -hmm. I feel good today. So I, I really, I can appreciate what you just said because it makes sense. But how does the body image affect our mental health or our success? Okay. So when you have a, a positive body image, you are, like I said, more confident. It shows in the way you carry yourself. You are a more effective communicator in your relationships. You have healthier relationships. So that's the positive side of body image. Now, what I've seen with clients who come to me and have that exhibit some kind of negative body image, they are you know, usually not as very confident in themselves. They lack a lot of confidence. Um, when body image gets out of control or when you don't pay attention to it or address it, it could lead to more um, complex issues like anxiety, depression, eating disorders. And unfortunately, in some people, it can lead to suicide. So it is something that we don't talk about very often, but it's very, very impactful to our mental health and well-being. And so that's why I like to come on shows like this and, and workshops to generate awareness about the importance of body image um, for women and men, as, and especially even our youth of today. With the onset of social media, what we have seen is that body image has become a big issue with our youth because they go on social media and they see what is what we as adults know is unrealistic. And so the, these are unrealistic beauty standards that have been set and we have younger and younger kids um, wanting to achieve these unrealistic beauty standards. It's sad to know that um, girls as young as seven are now starting to express uh, some kind of body dissatisfaction. Um, some of them are requesting that they want to lose weight, they want to change their hair, and we're discovering that it's a lot of it is because of what they see in, on, in social media, on the TV, even in the print media. And so it's important that we get ahead of this and start to educate our girls, educate our boys about what a healthy body image looks like. Actually, um, I was going to bring up the point that we probably should start the body image training or conditioning. I don't know if that's the right word at an early age and start it with our youth because it's something that's going to be instilled in you. It's, I guess it's sort of like uh, making your bed every day. You get up every day and you make your bed. If you get up and you make that a habit, then every day you're also going to get up and make sure that you have made your body the way it should be before you go out. If you, if you refuse to step outside the door, even outside of your bedroom, unless you are fully prepared and you look good to yourself, is where it all has to start. And it's a lifelong journey. What, um, what would be some of the drivers for women particularly? So in terms of their body image? Um, yes. Be before I address that, I will, I will say that you are very right that it's important that we start to address it with, uh, with, the, with our girls and boys at a much younger age. And so one of the things that I started doing this year is working with kids as young as third grade. Why third grade? Because at that age, they're starting to you know, recognize the changes in their body. Some of, some of them may be experiencing early signs of puberty. So I run this workshops that you know, start to talk to them about what um, their, how to be confident in themselves. I keep it very simple. And you know, having them look at a mirror and when they look at the mirror, 
to mention things positive about themselves so that by the time they get to my age or your age, they're very confident regardless of what the world may say or tell them. So we need to, the, the workshops are designed to um, build up the self-worth from within because a lot of us look for outside validation when it comes to our body image. And that's why we have let social media impact us so much in, in terms of the way we perceive ourselves. So I just thought I'd drop, I'll mention that. Now, in terms of what are the drivers of body image? Oh my goodness, family dynamics. A lot of the clients that I've worked with, somebody in their family, somebody close to them said something. And it doesn't matter how long ago, or even if it was just one comment, it had stuck with them and was probably the onset for their body image issues. So your family dynamics do have a lot to say to how you perceive yourself. So we want to be careful what we tell our loved ones, you know, the way we describe our girls, how, you know, don't make it so much about their physical appearance. There's so much more to a girl than the way she looks. There are her achievements, her capabilities, you know, the way she, she speaks. So you want to play up more of those attributes of our girls and boys to than their physical appearance. I would say um, for us working people, it's our work environment. You know, when you go into the office and I'm sure all of us have sat in on a meeting or we've had a boss who said something negative to us and that started to weigh on our confidence. So the work environment and culture is a significant part of, of the body image journey and creating diverse and safe spaces where you can have these kinds of conversations really helps to improve the um, body image of your coworkers and people in your environment. Um, I would also say uh, your social circles. For me, I'm learning over the year, I've learned over the years to create boundaries um, when it comes to friends. The, a funny story, in, I'm from Nigeria, born and raised. I went to an all girls boarding school. One of the things that I remember clearly about the boarding school was that we were controlled by a bell. A bell told us when to wake up, when to go eat, when to go to class, you know, pretty much. Every time they needed us to transition to something, they rang a bell. So this morning, one morning I was rushing out of the dormitory to head to class. The matrons would lock the door. Um, uh, after a certain time, so you had to head to class. And so I dressed up and ran out and headed to class and I got to class and a classmate of mine, she's like, Ma, where are your earrings? You look so ugly without your earrings on. This happened, I wanna say what, 35 years ago? And ever since then, hardly ever will you see me without earrings. In fact, it took me a long time to get over that one negative comment. The fact that I looked ugly without earrings stuck with me for years. And so, um, but now in my body image journey, I decided to take that comment and flip it. These days, I, I wear my earrings as a statement. Most of the time you see me with unique statement earrings and that's my way of reversing that negativity to something positive. So you want to create boundaries. You want to make sure that the people you surround yourself with are people who are feeding positive information. And then those who do give you the negative because it's going to come, you want to be able to switch your mindset, look for the positive in it and, and, and not allow it to impact your core of who you are. So, th so those are just some basic um, examples of how it impacts our our well-being. Are there any specifics that you can think of for business owners, particularly male or female, that can help with the body image other than uh, what you've mentioned already? If you look good, you're going to feel good, and you'll probably do a good job, right? Yes, it's true. I mean, looking good, when you look good, you feel good. That's definitely true. But 
for, for me, for years, I did use fashion as a camouflage. Yeah, I, I used it as a camouflage be, when I was going into the office on a daily basis. But the truth of the fact is, towards the end of the day, I would feel the insecurity all come back. So right now, I tell people, your mindset is very key to your body image journey. And so those positive affirmations in the morning, they help to set your mindset. So regardless of what you wear, you should be able to last the whole day confident in who you are. So you want to do your positive affirmations on a daily basis, whatever that looks like. It could be just, you know, some kind words that you say to yourself. For me, I, I focus much on what the Bible says. My, I know that my identity is very much grounded in the word of God. And so I focus on the word of God and speak those verses to my life. For others, it could be meditation, meditating on, on positive things, things that bring you joy. Um, another big thing is self-care. I tell people self-care is, I mean, we hear a lot about it, but I do, I encourage you to to incorporate it into your life. And sometimes I think we overcomplicate things. Self-care doesn't have to be anything elaborate like getting on a plane and going on some big vacation. No, keep it simple. Self-care is anything that brings you joy. If it's gardening, you go and garden a few times a day, or sorry, a few times a week. If it's going for a manicure or pedicure, you go get a manicure and pedicure. And if you can't afford the manicure and pedicure, hey, go to Dollar Tree. They have the press on nails. Do it. Just looking at how beautiful your nails are once you put on those press on nails will boost your confidence. And for my male counterparts, going to the gym, just a workout. Even if you don't work out, going for a walk, a 20 minute walk does marvelous things for our mindset. There have been studies done about the power of just exercising and how it shifts our mindset and shifts our mood into a more positive area. So those are the tips that I would suggest that people incorporate, you know, in, in their work life, work life balance. Those are all good things. Those are all very, very good. And they're not that difficult for no. anyone to do. Mm -hmm. And everyone has to choose what's going to fit for them. So when we are thinking about body image and we need to reach out to get some help, how do we get in touch with you? Oh, good. I love meeting new people, but the best place to find me would be on LinkedIn and also my website. My website is simple, mmaeme.com. So my first and last name.com, mmaeme.com. And then same thing on, on LinkedIn, maeme.com. I'm also on Instagram, but not as active. I write a lot on LinkedIn. And so that would be a good place to see a lot of the work I do, my content and where I give tips, practical tips. I'm one of those people like, look, I don't have a lot of time. I like to give practical tips because I like to receive practical tips that I can implement today. And so that, those would be the best ways to get in touch with me. Okay, would you... Um, share those with me and then I'll make sure they're in the description so everyone can Absolutely. see them as they're watching our video. Is there any last point or points that you want to leave with us um, here in the ICEL Medicare plans Absolutely. space? Absolutely. Like I always tell um, my audience right before I leave, I leave them, I want you all to know one thing, own your expertise. As a leader in your industry, you have earned the seat at the table through your hard work, dedication, and wealth of knowledge. Embrace your expertise and let it shine. Believe in your skills, experiences, and perspectives. And remember that you bring a fresh and valuable voice to the table and your voice deserves to be heard. Thank oh, you. thank you. Those are such powerful words to leave us with. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so happy that you could fit me into your schedule. Um, I 
I just, I met you through another organization, but thought that this would be a great, great opportunity. Thank you so much for having me. This has been awesome. I am blessed to just be on your show and I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome.